Hey, it's John from Smart Edition Academy, and in today's video, we're gonna go over the PSAT 8-9 math section. There is a lot that you need to know for this section. So in this video, we're gonna go over each and every topic that you will see on the test, and we're gonna give you an idea of what you can expect so that you can do as well as you can possibly do on the test. Now, before we get into the video, make sure you check out the links in the description below. There are links to our free PSAT 8-9 practice test, our uh, Smart Edition Academy PSAT 8-9 online course, and lots of other helpful resources for you guys. So let's go ahead and get into the video. The math section is going to be 60 minutes with 38 questions. Now this is broken up into two different sections. One where you'll be able to use a calculator and another section where you will not be able to use a calculator. So the section without the calculator is going to be 20 minutes and 13 questions. And that breaks up into 10 multiple choice questions and three grid in questions. So they're not all multiple choice. You will have to actually supply an answer for uh, this section of the test. Now for the math with a calculator section, this section is just gonna have bigger numbers. They're not necessarily much harder questions. They will just have like big decimals and things like that that a calculator is gonna help you with. So this section is 40 minutes and 25 questions, and you can expect 21 multiple choice questions and four grid in questions. Now the math section is gonna cover two main topics, and then there's a third topic that's just gonna be a few questions, but uh, the first one is the heart of algebra. And this is really showing your mastery of linear equations and systems. This will be about 16 questions on the test. And then you'll also see problem solving and data analysis. So this is about analyzing problems and drawing information from data. And this is gonna be 16 questions. And then there's a third section, which is called Passport to Advanced Math. So these will be a little bit harder questions. Uh, they may uh, ask you to kind of do more complex uh, solving, but not by much. And this is only gonna be six questions of this section of the test. Now for the first section, the heart of algebra, you will need to uh, focus on obviously algebra, but it'd be focusing on things like linear equations, systems of linear equations, and functions. And these questions ask you to create equations that represent a situation. Uh, solve equations and systems of equations, and make connections between different representations of linear relationships. So more specifically, the types of questions that you'll see will be things like create and solve and interpret systems of two linear equations with two variables, uh, algebraically solve linear equations or inequalities in one variable, uh, algebraically solve systems of two linear equations with two variables, so that'll be a little bit more difficult, and uh, things like interpret the variables and the constants and expressions for linear functions. Now when it comes to the section with the problem solving and data analysis, we'll be asked to you know, do things using ratios, percentages, proportional reasoning to solve problems in kind of real world situations, uh, describing relationships which, uh, that are shown graphically and analyzing statistical data. Now this group of skills is really meant and, and is testing you on being quantitatively literate, uh, demonstrating a command of the math that really will resonate throughout your high school courses, college courses, career training programs, and really just everyday life. So that's kind of what they're looking for in this section. Now to break it down more, you know, we mentioned, uh, you know, using ratios, rates, proportional relationships, uh, scaled drawings, uh, solving single and multi-step problems. Uh, solving single and multi-step problems involving percentages, solving single and multi-step problems involving measurement quantities, uh, and, and unit conversions. You'll also run into things like scatter plots, uh, linear, quadratic, or exponential models to describe how the variables are related, um, using relationships between two variables to kind of investigate key features of a graph. So you'll need to be able to pull that information out of a graph, the key features to answer any questions, you know, for that particular topic. And all of this stuff may consist of tables, graphs, and text summaries, and you'll have to pull out all the information to answer the questions correctly. And when it comes to the passport to advanced math, uh, this is only gonna be six questions. They'll be a little bit more difficult, but it includes kind of more complex equations uh, or functions. So the types of questions that you'll see here are kind of cre creating a quadratic or an exponential function uh, or an equation that models a context. Uh, things like determining the most suitable form of an expression or an equation to reveal a particular trait given in the context of that question. And you might see things like uh, creating an equivalent expression involving rational exponents and radicals, which includes simplifying or rewriting them in other forms. 
you may be asked to create uh, an equivalent form of an algebraic expression by using structure and fluency within those operations. Now, all of this stuff comes directly from the College Board, so it's really specific and lets you know exactly what you'll need to know. Now, while there's only six questions, there is a lot that could be covered, so if we kind of keep talking about the different topics that you could see on the test, there is solving a system of one linear equation and one quadratic equation, uh, rewriting simple rational expressions, uh, interpret parts of non-linear expressions in terms of their context, uh, understanding the relationships between zeros and factors of polynomials, um, and using that knowledge to sketch graphs, understanding a nonlinear relationship between two variables by making connections between their algebraic and graphical representations. Uh, lastly, you might see things like uh, using function notations and interpreting statements using function notations, using structure to isolate or identify a quantity of interest in an expression and isolate a quantity of interest in an equation. So this is all the everything that you'll see on this math section. It is quite a bit. Again, check out the links in the description below. If you want to practice these types of problems, you can take our free PSAT 8-9 practice test. And if you really want to dive in, you can check out our online course that has time to practice tests, question banks, uh, all the lesson modules to help you learn this material, flashcards, video lessons, all that good stuff. Now, if you found this video helpful, uh, subscribe to the channel, get notifications when new videos are coming out. We have videos coming out all the time, so I want to make sure you guys are seeing those. And until the next time, we'll see you guys on the next video.